Hello everyone, I'm happy to be here at the CubeSat Developers Workshop and present to you the progress on the Polarize project. This is a Python project for open source deep learning for telemetry behavior and anomaly detection. So my name is Rodwan Boomgar and I'll be presenting to you uh, what we've been doing uh, about that. And the views expressed here are my own. So the, the goal of Polaris is to pave the way toward open source autonomous satellite operations for missions at all scale anywhere in the solar system and beyond. So uh, from this goal, uh, you've certainly seen that at the last uh, CubeSat Developers Workshop in 2020, where we presented our uh, rather simple uh, pipeline in three parts, fetching data, learning from it, and visualizing. Uh, the fetching part is able to get data from different sources, and the learning part is using machine learning to detect dependencies between spacecraft telemetry. And what we presented last year, thanks to Hugh Brown, one of the, the Hugh Brown, one of the developers, is uh, that we we sh we shown um, a graph of relations between telemetries, and each link there is uh, has a different uh, value and different uh, uh, strength in in behavior, and you can see that in um, in the in the graph itself. So if you go on the website and you click on demo, you can you can navigate the the light cell two mission uh, graph which has been calculated. And there you can you can click on a node, go there, and you actually would uh, find out wh what it is about, and uh, and uh, and then uh, zoom out, and and then see to what it's related to. So the names are kind of uh, not really cryptic because they're defined by the mission operators, and you have different names also that are related to space weather. So we actually use different sources of, of data to to. Uh, to make relations with uh, with things, so this graph is used by spacecraft operators uh, to try to uh, investigate uh, the anomalies that they they've been uh, they've been going through. So, and uh, and our goal uh, this year is to actually develop an anomaly uh, detection module, which is called Betsy. Uh, we integrated it here in the pipeline for pol thanks to a common subcommon that we will call Polaris Anomaly. This is work in progress. But the goal is actually generate more reports, anomaly reports, which would be valuable for an operation team. So there's a new space for small satellites, and we, we feel like an open source tool and in Python, which is easy to, to, to understand and code with, um, is, is useful for, for this community. So, and, and here, when we talk about small spacecraft, about CubeSats, uh, you have hundreds of telemetry parameters. But where I come from, I used to work at the European Space Agency at the Operations Center, where uh, the scientific missions are usually big spacecraft for Earth observation, for instance, here, uh, where you have uh, in the right, you see several people managing the spacecraft and operating it. And people who are dedicated to specific payload, but also uh, full system engineers you know, that know everything about the spacecraft. What we see in the industry is that the missions are going towards constellations, so fleets of satellite, and and this is a massive multiplication of assets and also a big change in, in how operations are handled uh, because you can't really handle the same way. Uh, that doesn't scale up if you have too many people on one spacecraft, so you have to have many people for several spacecraft, uh, that would be okay. So uh, the goal of Paris is to actually tackle that and, and help with machine learning. So one one aspect that we have to come with is what what do we call an anomaly? So on a spacecraft with twenty thousand to forty thousand parameters, it's very hard to to know what really an anomaly is. So usually you get warnings from out of limits um, uh, setup, and uh, and you want to know and sense everything from your spacecraft so you can actually analyze and diagnose everything. So but usually anomalies are unusual events. For for Polaris, what we do is that we get data from uh, from different sources so and the main one is satnox so if you don't know satnox i invite you to go visit the website so satnox is an amazing project where uh, people all around the world actually build their own ground station thanks to blueprints that are open source and and software that is open source and once you have your ground station you can connect to the network and help uh, the coverage across the globe and and cover uh, different missions that are collected thanks to the Satnox uh, network and database. Uh, 
So we get data from there, and uh, and this helps uh, Satnox helps different missions like the Guatemala missions here, uh, Quetzal One, uh, which is this is a picture from last summer, uh, and 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 this is wonderful. <laughs> uh, so the what we do with Polaris, we actually get data from other sources. So last summer we got. We got a new uh, a new data source, which is from from space weather. So we're trying to collect open data from space weather from different sources. Uh, but we're also trying to collect information on orbits because this is important when you want to know uh, what is the link between uh, an anomalous event on your telemetry, what is what is the link with uh, a weather a space weather event uh, when you're in orbit. So you can explain that a bit better uh, thanks to the graph first, but then. Uh, with further analysis on what we're trying to come up with. So, uh, and so far the input data uh, type is uh, of course just a network fetch thanks to the Satnox connectors, uh, but we can also manage CSV files and JSON files which has been very useful. So some people don't have a database, they are not on Satnox, so they can they can actually uh, use Polaris thanks to this, uh, to, this um, uh, to those uh, interfaces. Uh, and of course, we're investigating how to to integrate new data sources, and we will be will be happy to get your contribution on that. So what we want to do is, of course, getting knowledge from the spacecraft, so learning from it. And here, uh, for anomaly detection, I put first uh, stack plot of the telemetry from Light Cell Two. So what we see here is uh, just the telemetry uh, in uh, in of 20 days in uh, September 2019. For light cell two mission, and and you can see different bumps and, and ups and downs, and uh, you don't really know what what is the behavior over there. But uh, so we want first to define what is an anomaly. So earlier I said an anomaly is uh, just unusual event, an unusual event, knowing that I mean the assumption is that most of the time good things happen, so it's hard to detect. Uh, it's hard to learn anomalies, so you learn what is usual and then everything that diverges from that is usually taken as an anomaly. And for from our point of view, what we, we did is uh, taking a little, a slightly different uh, um, position is unusual change of behavior. So uh, meaning that the satellite is behaving in different manners, so it has different behaviors. So when there is a change, you know, something could look anomalous, but actually normal because you just change be normal to a normal behavior, another normal behavior. So, but we want to detect those changes. And the assumptions that the behavior are uh, defined by, can be defined by the set of telemetry. So meaning that we could uh, learn the behavior thanks to the telemetry. And that, uh, and that unusual means that it's hard to predict. So uh, this is a good information. So meaning if we make a prediction model and it fails, it means that something happened uh, eventually if it's working well on usual uh, uh, behaviors. Um, so what we did is we took inspiration from a time series segmentation uh, paper, uh, which is using automatic feature learning thanks to the autoencoder model. The autoencoder model is a neural network that actually reproduce, learns to reproduce the input. And the input here in red get reproduced in blue and you can compare how, 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 how good is the fidelity of reprodu reproduction of the input. And in green, in the middle, you have what we call the feature uh, uh, learning. So, so that the neural network tries to learn the minimal set of information that is uh, that is necessary to reproduce with a good fidelity the, the input. And what we do is that we take windows of data on the telemetry, and and we are trying to um, uh, to reproduce uh, the the data with the the same model, and as as. As soon as we find a window where which can't be really reproduced, meaning that the distance in terms of features is is huge, it's bigger than uh, than the average, then uh, then what happens is that we trigger a breakpoint. So we say that something changes here, and we have a change in behavior. That's how we start to to detect anomalies. So here, just for the example, we we have uh, f from the algorithm inside the algorithm, we have the detection of uh, of uh, of the distances between the, this uh, central layer, uh, which is uh, which is kind of noisy, you could you could say, uh, but if you apply a threshold and uh, and extract events, that's what you get. So here, what you have to know is that those breakpoints are at the beginning of each window of analysis. So, uh, but they could happen anywhere in the window. Uh, 
before or maybe uh, eventually after. Uh, so, so, and what I did here is actually put the size of a window. So, uh, so this is what you get uh, at the moment in the, the present time, the current state of the of the module, uh, of the development. And uh, but the work in progress to actually re, re, fine tune this search and and get uh, the exact moment where this behavior changed. And uh, and have relevant relevant breakpoints definition, so there we could actually find uh, a change that is a synonym of an anomaly. So and of course uh, this year we're participating in the Google Summer of Code. We want to improve the reporting and our data visualization because this is important to diagnose, investigate, and explain. Explain, explain. It's important. So. Uh, there is a trendy topic in AI, which is called AI uh, explainability. And you know, with a graph, you, you have information. You know, one, once you know the, how to navigate the graph, it's, uh, it's very useful. But uh, how much does it explain? So, um, in in the project for Polaris, what we want to do is to reduce the operator workload. So we have to come up with very high level definition of uh, what's happening in a spacecraft, so that operators can can understand quickly and also n know what's happening, you know, because they also know the spacecraft. And and this is also like uh, when you explain with a higher level, you can interact with the you can interact with the mission plan, and which brings you closer to autonomous spacecraft operations. So uh, things have been happening in the in in the industry. So in 2015 so you have I think this is Utelsat a picture from them um, Utelsat yep uh, where you have 17 people for 27 satellites so that's less people than satellites it's already a big, uh, a big uh, advantage uh, and, and and so far we have 2,000 orbiting satellites when the current missions would double and triple even quadruple this number so we have to, to take care that we can scale up the operations at the same time and that's that's the goal of Polaris. So on the right, you see uh, the operations of the launch uh, of Starlink, if I'm correct. And in uh, in the middle is where we want to go. So <laughs> one person being able to to analyze uh, a complex situation and, and take decisions. So for this year, Google Summer of Code, we have two topics. Uh, the first one is comparing telemetry between two spacecraft because we want to learn from one to another. Uh, usually they have the same payload, so th this, is, uh, this is interesting. And we want to be able to extract knowledge from that. And we want to create valuable and dynamic anomaly reports. Uh, because this this is our interface we're realizing that you know people who get uh, get in into uh, Polaris you know if you're not a developer at the moment it's kind of hard so we want to 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 lower the bar of accessibility of the of the software and how to use it so we have many topics ongoing you know managing the knowledge with the database uh, having batch uh, batch processing um, interacting in the operations plan but at the moment, the big topics is really interacting with the more spacecraft operators. So we'll be happy to to have you on board if you if you're around, and if you're interested, and of course pushing the time series behavior analysis because uh, we find this promising. So we have the Google Summer of Code 2021. I said it already. If you're a student and you want to participate, just reach out. We'll be happy to to onboard you. Uh, take care. I think the deadline or almost passed. I think now. Um, but uh, we have ideas in the pipe, and you're always welcome to contribute. This is uh, this is a, a super interesting project. We've been so seeing so many new minds coming, and this is very really interesting for us. So how we work? You're free to come. We have an element uh, chat. Uh, you, you can you can join our room on Matrix. Uh, we have a GitLab repository, of course. Uh, the software is in Python, and it's uh, under the LGPL v3 license. And Every Friday we try to have this uh, conference, which is open to everyone. It's it's on Jitsi and it's uh, advertised in the channel. So do not hesitate to to join the channel. Everything happens there. We have people in Canada, to India, and a lot in Europe. So uh, you should always find somebody in the channel uh, to respond to you. So so you're welcome. And, and thanks for listening to all this. And if you want more information, you can just go to the to the website over there, and uh, and and yeah, reach out. Thanks a lot, and uh, and see you for the questions.